Um, welcome everyone to uh, my presentation about porting Chromium to FreeBSD. Uh, maybe a couple of words about me first. Um, I'm a sysadmin turned consultant from Cologne, Germany, dabbling for around 20 years or so in the FreeBSD environment, as, at least as an, as an user. And um, yeah, picked up the Chromium topic I think like two years ago or something. And uh, yeah, one wanted to, to show a bit about our struggles and uh, what we have to do to uh, get and keep Chromium running, running on, on FreeBSD. <clears throat> First of all, the current state, um, Chromium is in FreeBSD ports since end of 2010 for version 8 or 9, I think. Um, and since then saw various updates, more or less following the release schedule, sometimes closer, sometimes with some gaps. Currently, we are quite up to date. We have Chromium version 92 in ports, actually which is like a couple of weeks behind, unfortunately. Um, but we are working on, on Chromium version 93, which is the most recent one, um, to, to keep it up and, and, and going. Um, out of the box, current, or nowadays, we support most of the things Chromium brings. Um, so as you can see, Web conferencing now is, is working seamlessly on, on FreeBSD using Chromium. Um, as that's what I'm using right now. <clears throat> Biggest hurdle for us in, in terms of, of porting issues is the ever-growing need of more and more patches. Um, because there were various efforts to upstream more local patches so uh, that we get at least some kind of BSD support in uh, Chromium upstream. But the history from the past showed, I think very decently that this is not something the Chromium project wants. Um, at least there were explicit statements that uh, this might indicate some kind of support official support for the BSDs in Chromium and that they rather would not do it for for this very reason. Um, yeah, so we're um, keeping all the patches in our ports infrastructure. Um, and uh, yeah, this is quite, quite a hurdle to do so. <laughs> um, it doesn't help that the version policy of Chromium is quite fast. By default, now we had a new version every six weeks. Um, and whenever we get a new Chromium version, all of the old versions are immediately outdated. And um, so if we want to have the most recent security patches and so on, we need to keep to the most recent uh, Chromium version. And uh, starting with version 94, this tends to be even more of an issue than than it is right now because they they're moving to a four week schedule. Um, so we need to be even faster in in, in porting the latest changes over to uh, our adapted version for FreeBSD. Um, maybe they par parallel with the V94, they want to release on an eight week schedule, some kind of stable-ish version. Um, so maybe that would be a good path forward for, for our port so that we can can maybe reduce a bit the, the, the time that is required to uh, keep Chromium up and running. Um, yeah. On, on the patches side, this is uh, what I mentioned before. Currently, we have near, nearly 1,000 patches for the the Chromium tree to make it running on uh, on FreeBSD. 
which we need to maintain, which which each new version, because they tend to refactor a lot in the code. So uh, at least a good portion of the patches will fail to apply whenever we we import a new version into in the, into the ports. Luckily for us, most of the patches are really just applying uh, the fine um, to the Linux specific section uh, that we want to compile them on on, on the BSDs as well. Um, but we have quite a lot of operating system specific stuff we need to maintain and uh, keep that's it, keep working. Um, and in, in, in the FreeBSD land. Um, most of the stuff which is like specific only for, for FreeBSD um, is we handle everything that is specific to process handles and process metrics that we have somewhere in, 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 in Chromium, which has its own FreeBSD implementation classes, as well as any system information and any in human interface device connections um, that Chromium tends to, to do by itself as well. Um, on the audio side, luckily the OpenBSD guys have uh, an implementation for SNDIO, um, which we adopted to, to our port so uh, that we get that stuff as well. Um, so all in all, um, when when patching a new version or importing a new version of, of, of Chromium, usually we we do it in, in, in a couple of, of playthroughs. So the first one is to try to get all of the existing patches working again, at least that are apply cleanly. And then we uh, need to come through all of the code that has changed to see whether some some of the Linux specific code needs to be enabled using the defines or even needs to be adapted because they do some, some Linux specific stuff, which we need to write an implementation for FreeBSD4. And um, currently when compiling Chromium, it's about, I think, 50K C++ files, at least the, the web renderer, the Blink stuff, heavily templated. Um, so it, may take quite a while to compile the the entire beast um i think at least on my machine it's without cc cache for around a day or so um so we 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 try to to uh, start early on the on the patch cycle for each and every new version um so that we on release day might have some something working Obviously, it doesn't we we don't succeed all the time on on this, but uh, this is at least the goal we we do have for uh, for the part. <clears throat> Other thing is um, Chromium by itself tends to to depend on. Like, quite a lot of third-party stuff, which by default, they use fixed in-tree versions of it, um, which is, I think, good for, for the Chromium developers because they have a fixed version they can, can target, which is a bit problematic for us. Um, as sometimes we need to patch those libraries as well because we have them them living separately in our ports and not all of the patches are upstream there as well, or they have just some old versions which don't have the FreeBSD patches yet. So uh, what we usually try to do is to change the build mechanism to uh, say that we don't use the entry versions and rather rely on whatever is installed on your FreeBSD machine. Um, and depend on on the versions from ports, so we don't need to to care as much about uh, porting those third party to Chromium at least libraries as well. Um, it doesn't work all the time because 
for at least for 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 some for some libraries there is some kind of tooling to uh, to to do this um but at least we have had a couple of versions where the release build didn't didn't work when we did run the unbundler to to use the system libraries i think mainly because none of the official chromium releases uses that tooling actively so uh, while it tends to get fixed it might be in a broken state now and then um <clears throat> yeah Another big issue, <laughs> at least uh, I think, to 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 nearly every distributor of Chromium, is the the whole Python issue. Um, I think most of you know that Python 2.7 is end of life for some time now. And um, on the one hand, we have very good news since uh, at least since version 92 from August, I think. Um, the default version we need in the build system is now. Python 3, but there are still parts of the build which fall back and require Python 2.7 inter interpreter to run. Um, so <laughs> now we don't depend purely on Python 2 anymore, but now we depend on both Python versions, which is, I think, a step in the right direction, but it's not where we want to be. So um, at this point in time, Chromium is still one of the offenders in the ports tree um, that we, I think, really don't want to remove, but um, it's keeping us from from removing Python two because we still need it for 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 building uh, Chromium. On on a side note, there, uh, Chromium depends on a lot of stuff to 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 build actually. Um, and currently, it's they they use their own make file generator, which is called GN, which is in tree as well, which then goes on to to generate Ninja build files to do the the bulk of the build using using Ninja, and then calls various tools from that. Most of the scripting is done in Python. That's where, where where this Python issue comes in, but uh, we also have dependencies, for example, to Node.js because some of the stuff, the JavaScript stuff in the, in the browser depends on Node, and uh, we used to have a dependency to, to 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 Java for a couple of time because they had a couple of tools to optimize source files in JavaScript. Uh, which was written in Java, so they they called some 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 Java stuff during the build. <laughs> so it's so one one gigantic ecosystem of of stuff that we that we need to uh, to build this and to to keep this running. <clears throat> Another interesting point is um, which I. Did a lot of, well, at least some kind of work in, in the past, I think half year, is uh, Capsicum. Um, for multiple reasons. One of the reasons, obviously, is a web browser is like such a central component, which is very exposed because obviously we do a lot of external connections to it. That we really do want to have sandboxing in it. Um, luckily for us, there already was a POC for Capsicum and Chromium. The not so good news is this was in Chromium eight and nine, <laughs> so a lot of things have changed th uh, since 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 then. Um, what really helps for us there is. Chromium is already built with sandboxing in mind, and um, they do ship a plethora of sandboxing mechanisms specific for each and every operating system. Um, they at least officially support. 
And um, currently we are back to the state again where we at least have um, the tooling in place that we call or custom FreeBSD sandbox implementation inside uh, Chromium, but um, it doesn't really do anything. But um, it should make it easier for for up and coming versions to um, to re enable Capsicum at least for some of the sub processes, um, like renderer or something that we uh, that we have in Chromium. Um, so stay tuned. I think in at least a couple of months we. Uh, we might have something in there to to further improve the security of, of running Chromium on FreeBSD. <clears throat> Which kind of brings us to yeah the wish list really we or at least I have uh, for for our Chromium port. I think the most important thing really is to add proper capsicum support that we do have sandboxing for um, the Chromium web browser, um, which is most likely one of the bigger issues or at least more time con con consuming because we need to, to test all the different code paths that it might be using. and. Um, because browsers nowadays are much, much more than just displaying a web page. Um, there's many, many things to test, really. Um, another thing which I think will help during porting and ensuring that no one has nasty surprises when updating to a newer version is that we should fix all the unit tests that Chromium ships with. Many of them are already run out of the box. Um, but I tend to, to skip some or most of them during um, the version upgrades because they add a considerable, considerable amount of patches, additional patches that we need to take care of. Um, but on the other hand, if we automatically can test that most of the, the internal Chromium stuff is working, um, maybe this would ensure that we have a better quality of, of the, the port itself. Um, Next thing on the list is currently for FreeBSD, we only support XDoc as a windowing server with the up and coming Wayland. And we have at least some, some, some working Wayland stuff now on the ports. I think it should be good if we could enable the existing Wayland support that there is already for Linux and Chromium, um, so that we at least can can play around with that and uh, see whether that is any good and uh, works for us. Um, it's kind of a lower priority right now because the default, as far as I know, for Linux for Chromium is still X11. So. Um, yeah, but it would be good to have it just in case if that we are, we are prepared for what's up and coming. <laughs> and um, last point, at least on the slide, is um, we have a bit more esoteric functions, namely Web USB and Web Bluetooth, um, which we currently don't support at all in our port type Bluetooth stack is disabled um, and it, I think it would be kind of nice to have those features on FreeBSD as well um, but seeing as our Bluetooth stack isn't really in the best shape and um, at least I currently didn't see any active requests for having that feature on, 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 on FreeBSD 
Um, yeah, it's kind kind of the the, the lowest priority, but um, we we have a couple of things that we can work and that we that we can enable. Um, like if we have too much time. <clears throat> Lastly, um, yeah, the main repository where we do development for a Chromium port is nowadays uh, on GitHub in the Chromium repository in the FreeBSD group project. And um, yeah, th this is where we have all the, the development for new versions in their branches and have the, the master sources for, for the port. Um, and we have for FreeBSD dash Chromium mailing list, um, which at least we or I kind of actively read. So uh, if anyone has good ideas or wants to help on that, feel free to to use any of those resources. And um, yeah. Lastly, I wanted to to thank um, on FreeBSD side Rene, which is currently taking care of most of the testing and bringing everything into the port tree. Um, as I'm only like developing the, the the port and putting it up to GitHub, and everything else is his work. And uh, Robert, Robert from OpenBSD, who is maintaining their port. And um, yeah, it's responsible for, for example, the sound IO implementation. And uh, like, this is one of the the sources we kind of use if we are stuck on uh, some some problems uh, <laughs> which we have in the port. So uh, yeah, then um, I think that's everything so far from my side. So uh, we can take a couple of questions if you want to. So there are some questions in the chat. Maybe yes. Do those first, or if people can uh, want to uh, do questions with voice, they can just raise their hand and. That's the raise hand button in the lower right corner. And uh, I'm just, I can unmute you. I can talk or speak. So I think the first question from the chat was um, no chance of getting, getting that integrated upstream. Um, honestly, I think we don't have any chances to, to, to actively get anything upstream we have a couple of, of places interestingly there's uh, I think in the policy stuff section uh, where they enumerate operating systems and have assigned constants to it and um, in some version FreeBSD just showed up with a comment on hey uh, we've put, put some unsupported platforms in there to make porting easier but on the other hand, uh, at least the most recent tries to get anything uh, integrated upstream were rejected due to yeah, unsupported operating system. So maybe in a year or so, it would be a good try, a good, good, good call to maybe try again, whether that could have changed. But um, don't really see any any chance right now to to get in anything in there. So next question. Uh, 
uh, which parts of Chromium are the biggest problems to support in FreeBSD? Uh, specific, specific, specifically, would it be possible to take parts of Chromium and completely rewrite re re the parts that are Linux specific? Um, we kind of do this already. Um, but it doesn't really help all that much because um, I think the Chromium authors are quite eager at refactoring their code from time to time. Uh, so we need to revisit the places we rewritten for, for FreeBSD peri periodically as well, um, at least to, that we adhere to the newest interfaces and uh, things they shuffled around in the base library. Um, so right now it seems to be the, the easier approach to everything that is Linux specific code, which works on FreeBSD kind of to just enable and use that. And um, just the stuff that we don't or can't use, um, rewriting that. A couple of things we also take from the Mac port, like the KQ stuff or so. So, um, yeah. And, uh, next question, I think, is whether we have any specific wishes or features, uh, or feature requests for the base system. Um, I don't think so at the moment. Because most most of the stuff that is Linux specific is, I think, nothing we want to have in base. Like Chromium does fancy stuff like reading the procfs files directly and extracting information from there. Um, the the entire Bluetooth stack, which is Linux specific as well. Um, Other than that, I don't think we we have anything in there which really would be urgent for us to 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 have at the moment. Any further questions? How much effort is porting and not update freebies usually? Um. It depends whether we take time actively spent developing or time waiting for the compiler to give any meaningful results. Um, I'd say the usually all the porting stuff that we actively do can be done within a day. Um, if there's not like some new subsystem or any any bigger issue within the um, within the build system, so just the like default, nothing much has changed thingy, um, which then usually, f at least on my side, pans out over a week because needing to wait for the compiler to to compile all the stuff and if I leave it running overnight usually it compiles like 10 files and then throws an error <laughs> which I see in the morning uh, and um, I think the testing really is, is what what is taking a long time so usually before release we we do a Puria build for at least 13 12 dot 2 11.4 on, on AMD 64 and at least one of them for e, uh, I386. So at least four, four full builds of, of, of Chromium, um, which yeah, could take them quite some time, like two or three days. So thanks everybody for, for tuning in. Hope that, uh, it was interesting to to see a bit or hear a bit about uh, the Chromium port. And uh, have a nice day and enjoy the other talks. <laughs>